From everything that I'm hearing from delegates, they're planning to bring their families, their children, their husbands, their wives, and to make a, a weekend of it, to come for the convention, but then to stay a little later and get around the state and see what they can, what they can do. And I'll, t I'll tell you uh, one of the secrets that, uh, of convention planning. Most of our delegates, you know, they, uh, in the typical day of a delegate, they will have their breakfast meetings from 7 to 9 in the morning. And then from 9 till 4 o'clock, when we gavel, they're free. They have a lot of free time on their hands. Now they can go to the trainings and they can go to the caucus meetings and many of them do. But for a lot of them, that nine to four hour block of time is free time for them. And so they like to get around the, the, the state, they like to get around and see as much as they can see. And so we've been encouraging convention and visitors bureaus, business communities to really make it easy for them and to make it appealing for them to go to different places within the state. So if they've only got an hour, here's what you can do. If you have two hours, here's what you can do. If you've got five hours, here's what you can do. If you want to take a day and explore, here's some things that you can do. And we will provide that kind of information to our delegates to encourage them to come down to Colorado Springs and, and see all of what's here. We know we, you've got some fabulous things. Of course, there's Pikes Peak and Garden of the Gods. And I'm personally hoping to get to Broadmoor uh, as soon as the convention is over. Uh, that will be my hiding place. Uh, so those are the kinds of things that we're hoping the business communities may consider uh, running a shuttle between Denver and, and Colorado Springs to get people down here. Trust me, if you run a shuttle, they will get on it. And they will come because they want to see as much as they can see, especially the people from the East Coast like me who've never gotten this far before. If, if I'm all the way out here, I might as well get around the state because I don't know when I'm coming back, but maybe you can convince me to come back. It's important to have a convention in the Rocky Mountain West because you can't just have them in the sort of democratic strongholds. You have to go to the, to the areas of the country that don't know the democratic message as well to bring the truth to them. The Democratic Party is represented here, believe it or not. Even in Colorado Springs, we have a lot of Democrats. We just need to make our voices heard, and I think that it'll shine a spotlight on Colorado and show what a strong Democrat community, community that we have. I just wanted to move out here so I could you know, be hiking in the summer and skiing in the winter and being up in the mountains. I think it's great to get a lot of people out here and to show that Democrats can come out here and live out here and have a wonderful life out here. We're all unique. We're independent. We uh, are very much value the, the environment and, and the, the amenities that we have here in the unpopulated West. Uh, it's not just cowboys and Indian. It's a, it's a beautiful place. We have mountains. We've got hiking, biking, skiing, uh, and the people in the West, in Colorado, are some of the nicest people in the world. I'm a native, born and raised in Colorado. Uh, I've lived in other places and I always come back because Colorado's just got a lot to offer. Colorado's a beautiful state and there's plenty of opportunity to get out and de-stress when you're done delegating and there's lots of opportunity to do that in a nice, healthy, great environment. And the people of Colorado, regardless of their political party, are genuinely very friendly because the West is the best. We're people that haven't been represented in far too long and we're a growing population.